Hello there, a very good evening and welcome to another edition of Newsline, of course, as always coming to you live from our News First studios here in Colombo. Your usual host, Farash Agutali, is out for the day. I'm Shalom Benedict and I will be sitting in for him today. Of course, the 20th Amendment to the Constitution uh, is currently being discussed in the Supreme Court uh, as per the petitions that have been filed by various parties challenging the 20th Amendment to the Constitution. Now, in the midst of all of this, while we're grappling with issues of national importance here in Sri Lanka, we must not forget that these incidents that happen in Sri Lanka are not the only things that affect us. We as Sri Lankans are a part of the global community and thus we cannot rule out the influence of foreign nations here in matters concerning us in Sri Lanka. And of course, to discuss these matters, we've got on our show uh, tonight uh, Mr. Az Amin Izzedine. He is the international editor and the deputy editor at Sunday Times. A very good evening, sir, and welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me here. So, speaking about these uh, influences that foreign countries have on Sri Lanka, the global picture, geopolitics, we call it in various names, uh, something that's most pertinent right now, since we're discussing the constitution, and that's kind of the talk of the town in Sri Lanka right now, is the 13th Amendment to the Constitution, and specifically the role played by India right. in this amendment. Now, a little bit of a backstory to this uh, is the fact that uh, under the Indo-Sri Lanka Agreement, Sri Lanka agreed to implement the 13th Amendment to the constitution. It was included in the constitution. However, this has not been um, fully, uh, we have not gone to the full lengths of the promises that we made under the Indo-Sri Lanka Agreement to devolve uh, police powers and land powers to uh, the provincial councils in Sri Lanka. However, with talks of a new constitution on the horizon for Sri Lanka, India has now begun to voice their opinion and their strong stance that Sri Lanka must adhere to their international obligations under the Indo-Sri Lanka Agreement. How will we fare? But, you know, this is uh it's a very tricky question. Um, 1987 Indo Lanka Accord. Uh, we had to first, uh, uh, Shalon, um, uh, look at the, the backdrop hmm. that led to the 1987 agreement and the situation today. Make a, we had to make a quick comparison. Like 1987 was obviously that time, you know, it was Cold War, hmm. right? And uh, Sri Lanka's government policy at that time, the, that, uh, the, the UMP government of that era, was seen as a pro-West government, mm. right? And India has serious concerns about it. And India also, at that same time, uh, was pursuing an ambitious foreign policy doctrine called Indira Doctrine. Mm. And it was non-aligned. Yeah, not really non-aligned. I mean, India was a champion of an unaligned, uh, you movement. know, the moment. <laughs> but, but when it comes to the region, mm. you now it was taking, it was, you know, pursuing a policy of Indira doctrine, which means India first doctrine. Um, that, you know, it gives a message to India's neighbors, like perhaps with, uh, with the exception of Pakistan, because <laughs> they are the rivals. But other countries like you know Nepal, Maldives, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, and uh, probably Bhutan. Bhutan is one of India's. So I don't know. That's a different relationship they have. Uh, but other countries, you know, that you know, there's a diff their message for these countries. Look, if you have a domestic issues and if you need foreign intervention, first that message, the inter the request for intervention and assistance should come to India before you reach the other countries. Right. Now, Sri Lanka at that time, the UMP government was, you know, looking towards West, looking towards the United States uh, for weapons or for military assistance for other countries. Uh, so, because India was on the other side of the divide at that time because, mm. uh, say, Cold War was there, but India was, though non-aligned, was seen a more friendly. Pro -West. Yeah, pro-Soviet pro Union. Pro-Soviet Union, sorry, yeah. yes. And uh, then the second policy was India's, you know, the Tamil issue. Mm. You know, India was seen as pro-Tamil. Mm. You know, they were sympathetic towards the Tamil cause. Mm. They were not, I'm not saying that they are, you know, pro-terrorism or anything. Mm. But they were, you know, actually at that time they armed, financed, uh, you know, trained. There were training camps, you know, the India can't deny that, you mm. know, that. So this was the issue and uh, Sri Lanka found we cannot find, we cannot find the India, the, the LTT or the Tamil rebellion or the Tamil ter the, the terrorism issue 
without the support of India. Hmm. And when we sought, when we sought military assistance from the United States, even the United States recognized India's, you know, the India's presence in the in the, in the region, hmm. India's role in the region, and the, you know, some kind of a tacit agreement, for the recognition for this, the so-called Indira Doctrine, named after India's Prime Minister Indira Gandhi. Yeah, right. hmm. um, say that okay we can do that but seek first approval from india. india so this is this is the kind of situation we were in at that time so india was you know really asserting itself you know uh, in, a, in an aggressive manner in the 1970s and 80s and uh, mid 80s and uh, until situation changed after the cold war's demise hmm. so this was the really the political backdrop of the 1987 agreement and what really happened during that period was so we were also there were also talks that the voice of america was to set up a radio station and mm. some transmission uh, uh, equipment were to be brought in mm. and then the trincomalee oil farms were to be given to right. some western concerns so it's a uh, so in these are certain issues that india was thinking about it you know then uh, so this agreement was in, you know encompassing all these concerns and it's like uh, it's like a solution fitting all problems one solution fitting all the problems for mm. india so at the time the issues the voice of america the in the oil mm. tank farms and the cold war issue mm. and uh, so this was the backdrop and also india was india wants to solve the problem in a way that is pro in a, in a, in a way that will uh, settle the Tamil question because India was also concerned about the Tamil Nadu issue. Hmm. Because remember in the 1960s there was a separatist movement in Tamil Nadu also right. to, to create a Dravidian, uh, Dravidian state, hmm. uh, you know, uh, comprising all the Dravidian states and you know, so that was, that was though it died out uh, quietly, uh, but still that, you know, the Tamil nationalism in India feared could come up again in Tamil Nadu. But coming down to the present times now, that's yeah. the backstory really yeah. regarding the 13th Amendment to the Constitution. As far as India's position goes, I believe uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi uh, is also following an India first stance. Uh, we've seen a lot of nationalist movements, especially in, in America even, America first, Donald Trump's doctrine, and in India, as yeah. I said before, uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said, India first. Yeah. Maybe that is also part of the reason why they are now asserting uh, their, the commitments that Sri Lanka has made or has taken a strong stance for Sri Lanka to deliver on the commitments that they have made in the 13th, uh, in the Indo-Sri Lanka Accord. Indo-Sri Lanka Accord is a bilateral accord. Right. We cannot, nobody, neither country can abrogate this accord unilaterally. Exactly. That's, that's the price of provision. Hmm. And there is also another clause in the India Indo-Sri Indo Lanka Accord. I, think I don't remember the clause, the uh, number. But it says it's the shared responsibility of both India and Sri Lanka to ensure the security and safety of the communities, the people of the North and East. So this is a this is a serious you know issue you know for, for a serious Lanka's commitment. It's a commitment. It's, there, it's a shared commitment, mm. but look we at we have it. given them a stake yes. in the security I of mean, our people. It, 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 some point, some people can say you know from a, look at it from a, you know analyzing you know from a nationalistic point of view. Mm. It's really a, it's an affront to Sri Lanka's sovereignty. Okay. I mean, I mean this it is now we are bringing we have already committed someone an outside force for the Sri Lanka's you know issue mm. so India has according to the 1987 so uh, the accord stands it's still valid it is uh, so yet now opposition is growing within the within the government too mm. now say this they want to some a section of the government want Mm -hmm. uh, the abrogation of the, 19th, the 13th Amendment, which gives uh, devolution, and especially the new constitution the that we're drafting. Yeah. So they want to, you know, do away with that. And but still, people like uh, Mr. Douglas Devan, the Prime Minister Douglas Devan, that they are insisting on uh, the 13th Amendment. So uh, the, the Indian High Commission in here, they even tweeted some time back, you know, recently about a month or two back, um, when I think soon after the. Or to, uh, before the Tamil National Lands uh, delegation to, uh, met the, the new Indian High Commissioner, so they also tweeted about uh, you know uh, insist about uh, asserting their um, you know 
the 13th Amendment's importance of the 13th Amendment uh, uh, in, in resolving Sri Lanka's national question. Hmm. So it's, it's, a, it's a major, it's, a, it's going to be a major issue. And, uh, but, uh, but the thing is, uh, Shalon, that uh, India look at it from its national interest point of view. Hmm. At that time, it really 1987 and the Accord and the 13th Amendment, uh, it served India's interests. Hmm. But the question is, today you have the BJP government. It's a very strong, powerful government hmm. in the center. It doesn't need Tamil Nadu politicians' support. Hmm. Fine. So that you know, the Tamil Nadu pressure is not that much for the the central government. Hmm. So the central government thinks in terms of. So there is. It, it will interfere in, in Sri Lanka's issue, uh, the Sri Lanka's Tamil issue, only if it serves its national interests. So until such time, you know, India will. But this is this is real. India does not. This is a real, a trump card for India. Hmm. The 1987 day, they will not abrogate it. They want to keep it. Of course, India is not uh, the only party that is involved in the geopolitics in the region. Of course, that will inevitably affect Sri Lanka. We'll discuss more once we come back after this short commercial break. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Newsline. Thank you. News First, Newsline. Welcome back. You're watching Newsline on TV1. We're in discussion with uh, Amin Izzedin, the international editor of uh, Sunday Times. Uh, regarding uh, the international pressure that Sri Lanka currently is under and the geopolitics of the region. We spoke about India right before the break and the 13th Amendment to the Constitution and well at the end of the day the uh, crux of the matter is that we have given India a, a, an assurance that we will Im uh, implement the 13th Amendment to the Constitution and as you quite rightly pointed out uh, we cannot uh, borrogate from these uh, commitments that we have made unilaterally. But India is not the only player in the geopolitics of this region. Uh, and, and the volatility of uh, foreign policy, and uh, not foreign policy per se, but geopolitics is extreme. Uh, let's move on to some other players that have come into the forefront of Sri Lanka. You mentioned India and, uh, India and the United States as key players, especially during the time of the uh, resurgence of the LTTE in the 1980s. Uh, but right now, we see China has come up as a superpower in the world. Uh, and uh, one of the largest economies in the world and they are pumping in millions and millions of US dollars to Sri Lanka under the Belt and Road Initiative, which is their trump card? Would I be right to say that? Well, Belt and Road Initiative, you know, if you look at it from a trade point of view, yes, it is the Maritime Silk Road and uh, we are partners, we have signed the deals and mm -hmm. uh, so are the other countries in several other countries in, this, in, in, the, in the Indian Ocean region. It is, you know, if it is trade alone, look at it from a trade perspective, then it is, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, trade between nations, hmm. interdependence uh, on trade uh, matters, it leads to peace. Because when mm. we depend on each other for trade, you know, the trade develops through a mechanism. Mm. So certainly it might lead to, you know, peaceful, uh, atmosphere so but there are but the thing is issues are there you know it leading from south china sea issues and the south china issue is because you know that nine dash line you know that's because of the certain islands china is claiming sovereignty over these islands in hmm. south china sea hmm. disputed islands vietnam is disputing then the koreans then then the, then the philippines the you know the other several other countries you know hmm. So they have disputes, and most of these countries have, you know, pro you know, uh, some kind of a defense uh, deals with the United States, and uh, so this is now U U.S. does not want China to have this South China, you know, the sovereignty over these islands. Mm. So, so there is a lot of tension in that part of the world, mm. and there is also then in. China's pr presence in the Indian Ocean region and especially in South Asia and that is also adding pressure. So these are the new the geopolitical... And one of the most recent developments of course on that front, uh, especially concerning China, is uh, the disputes that have, been, uh, that have been occurring between China and India in the border states. I believe a few Indian soldiers yes. also paid with their lives. 
Yes. So this, this all we have to look at the picture, the the, the, the complete, big picture. the big picture. So that you have this, you know, the India-Pakistan issues, then India-China issue, the border issue, then the South China Sea disputes, hmm. and the Indian Ocean, the the growing presence of the big powers in the Indian Ocean. Hmm. Don't forget, you know, we have in the Indian Ocean an American base in Diego Garcia. Hmm. Now that that's of course disputed because the yes. uh, international uh, courts have ruled yeah. that this must be given back given to the back people. Given back to Mauritius, Mauritius at, and to the people exactly. of the Chagas Island. You know, they have been you know, evicted and hmm. so, it, so that's the question is you know how long can they uh, and how uh, can they how can they enforce their judgments? exactly <laughs> exactly they they can't you know forcibly occupying yes. one country and teaching human rights but also others, it doesn't you know? look good on the human rights exactly. record of yeah. these countries including the united kingdom yes. the united states so so what coming back to that you know there's so this is the bri hmm. so bri is certain people are looking at bri as china's security alliance hmm. so this is this is but I don't know whether we can, you know, interpret the BRI as the, you know, the, 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 the modern day equivalent of the Warsaw Pact, hmm. the Soviet Union led Warsaw Pact uh, during the Cold War. Hmm. So, so China is actually denying, they said, you know, look, this, there's, we don't have, this is our purpose is, you know, trade and infrastructure development is part of this Asia Infrastructure Bank uh, project hmm. and, you know, it's a, it's a big issue and, you know, we want to, improve trade between nations so right if trade is that peace but there are other issues like you know for instance now u.s united states mm -hmm. is worried um, that because china is growing mm -hmm. it's a rising power in time to come say by say another 10 years 15 years china will be world's number one economic power mm -hmm. overtaking the biggest united economy states. in the world yeah I mean, we've got a message from one of our viewers, and uh, he or she says that uh, India was all aligned with Russia at the time in the 1980s, and the United States was with Pakistan. It's not really a question. Yes, yes, that that was this Cold War period. India was an unaligned country, right. but you know they 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 had hmm. signed a friendship treaty with the Soviet Union. Hmm. So this friendship treaty is you know being seen as but actually actually at that time what we had was a loose bipolar system. Hmm. Loose in the sense it was not tight St compartmentalized mm. uh, system like you know because it, it gave room for the so-called non-aligned countries like Sri Lanka to and have India, a voice in the international yeah, arena for them to you know to move from this side or Good, to yeah. get the best of both worlds. Like, We've also got another question from one of our viewers and uh, he or she asks what would be the repercussions if Sri Lanka borrogates from their international obligations no. as far as the 13th amendment is concerned? Mm. The repercussions would be serious. Okay. It's. I mean, we will be. I mean, we'll be antagonizing India. We cannot afford to antagonize India. And we need India's friendship, because whatever the, even even in the job geostrategical point of view, I mean, I think the present government has understood this problem very well. Right. And that's what that's what they are insisting on neutrality. The first president's first, um, you know, the speech. You know, there's in the when he took over in the, in the inauguration ceremony, mm. he made he insisted on this um, Sri Lanka's neutrality. Mm. If we stay out of this geopolitical games that you guys playing, right? Okay, <laughs> <laughs> we want to be uh, neutral. Right. So this neutral, I mean, this this we really meant neutral means neutral. Now, mm. so during the nine line period, neutrality does not mean you know passivity. Mm. The nine line period, our Bandaranaikas, you know, who I mean, who really pushed those uh, things. Mm. They, so they really interfered as peacemakers in mm. global conflicts. Right, uh, like uh, many for the Arab-Israeli conflict, and uh, even even um, in, in the China, India-China conflict, also Sri Lanka played a major role in the, mm. as a peacemaker. So, but now we really mean neutrality. <laughs> so we just want to, you know, be the best of all everybody, you know, uh, the friend of friends of everybody, but um, four of none. Four of none. Yeah. But is this really an option? Because we see growing influence. We're in the final few minutes of the show, so let me try to put this as concise as I can. Uh, uh, the Hamadota port is under Chinese administration to a certain degree. Uh, then we have the issue concerning the East Container Terminal, which yeah. we have already signed a memorandum of understanding. It's a tripartite agreement between Sri Lanka, India, and Japan. Uh, but however, it's still questionable as to whether this will go forward as an agreement. Uh, then we have the United States uh, coming into Sri Lanka with agreements such as the AXA, the SOFAR, and the MCC agreements, which were broadly discussed 
Uh, but uh, in general, the public don't seem to have a clear understanding regarding the you know, the nitty-gritties of these agreements and you, we, the we information is not clear. Yes, we have to understand there's something called an informal military security alliances being formed in this part of the world, in the right. Indonesian region. Hmm. It's called, we call it quadrilateral or the quad. Hmm. The quadrilateral means at its four, it, it implies four people, four countries, hmm. India, hmm. the United States, hmm. Japan, right. Australia. Okay. Now there are talks, you know, there'll be the fifth guy, the, even France is interested in, the, in this kind of, you know, some kind of a, a security alliance. At the moment, the Quad is involved in joint military exercises, naval exercises in the Indian, Indian Ocean region. Mm. Um, you know, they're dealing with, you know, they're worried about the terrorism issues and security problems. And uh, uh, so, so this, this, is, this is the quadrilateral thing that we are talking about. So, Everyone is concerned about every problem. Sri Lanka is strategically located. Mm. The Hambantota, you just mentioned Hambantota. So Hambantota port is very strategically important place, you know, because the south of Hambantota is a vast ocean. Mm. You know, until you go to Antarctica, with no other you know, islands, there's no, no country to bases. claim the sea. Right. It, it's, it's yours, right? <laughs> there's international water, lot of, so, but still, uh, still, that this is that's a vantage point. Right. Right. From there, you can really observe a lot of things, and that is a very key. You know, um, the you know the east-west, uh, uh, the Middle East from the you know the, the, sea energy, route, the trade route, the, the, exactly the mm. energy route uh, from uh, Middle Eastern countries to China and the Eastern countries, the Eastern Asian countries. So it's like the Malacca Strait. It's just as you know as important as that particular place, you know, the mm. strategic location, but Sri Lanka's Hambantota, south of Hambantota is also a strategic route. So, so everyone's eye is there on Sri, Lanka. Yeah, on Sri Lanka. And the fact of the matter is that Sri Lanka's development will be seriously influenced by how we manage our foreign policy. If we do it right, we can, of course, uh, move into the ranks of maybe a developed country even in the coming years. And if, but if we do get it wrong, we will be. Uh, we will end up in the middle of a geopolitical tug of war uh, that throws the entire country into chaos. So, thank mm -hmm. you very much, Armin, for joining us on our show and uh, bringing uh, clarity to these matters. Of course, uh, it's quite hard to make this uh, discussion concise yeah. and you know, <laughs> pack it into 30 minutes. And like I promised you, I said yes. time will fly and yeah. time has indeed uh, gone out. Oh, really? Uh, and um, that's it from Newsline for today. Of course, uh, we will be back tomorrow again, same time, same place, uh, with your usual host, Farah Shaukatali. Uh, I'm Shalom Benedict. Thank you very much for tuning in. Until we meet next time, take care and God bless. Thank you, Shalom. Yeah.